and welcome back to another Patio Time with Patrick, a new year. Uh, and returning guest, Mesa Hurry. Hurry, sorry. Hurry, yeah. <laughs> welcome back. Uh, she just finished a web series on YouTube called Dirty Love. Yes. Now I know you've got a lot to talk about. Did, do you want to quick give a quick rundown of the, the series? There? Uh, what it's about? Yes. Okay, so Dirty Love is about um, an Arab Canadian Muslim woman who ends up selling sex toys when she loses her job. Um, but it's not only about that, it's also about, you know, her and her friends um, as they navigate dating life in their 30s and, you know, touching on issues, um, culture, religion, sex, um, kink, LGBTQ, B2. There we go. Yeah. Well, thanks for the quick one there. <laughs> um, so anyway, so cheers to yeah. the... Uh, cheers. There. So today's alcohol part is brought to you by 12 Monkeys, the Wonder Star, which uh, fits for you. <laughs> and we have as well a uh, white Zinfandel. Well, I put the cherry in there for representation for Dirty Love. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> your, your virgin date uh, there. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> uh, so, you said we're geeks. Okay. Well, yes. I'm a geek. Well. I have 19 questions for you. 19? 19. 19, okay. yes. I know that you choose them okay. randomly oh, we're going by rolling dice. a dice. Yes. Okay. I'm sure with your husband, yes. you're used to the, uh, the dice effect there. Oh my goodness. Well, those are uh, nice ones. Too. Thank you. Yes, they're, they're new metal. They're so just fancy. shake that up, roll it around, and then just give me a number there. Okay. Oh my gosh. Three. Three. All right. This is easy because it's nice and random for all the different questions. Some okay. are going to be uh, tough. Uh, so you roll the three. Yes. So well, actually, it's an interesting one because it brings up the, the Muslim part. Okay. So in. Dirty Love. Yeah. Your dad's character, sorry, your character's dad basically yes. disavowed her when he found yeah. out she was selling sex toys. Yeah. How are your parents reacting with some of your acting parts and stuff like this? Because it's um, pretty intense, some of the scenes and some of the, the well, acting. Well, they don't, they haven't watched any of it, uh, okay. other than like their scene, because those are my parents. Oh, they are? Uh, oh, those okay. are my real parents, yeah. yeah. And so I had prepped them throughout the last year and that I was writing this mm -hmm. um, and, and that I wanted them to be part of it. And, um, so my dad, he's just, you know, he, he mostly watches Arabic stuff, so he won't really watch it. And I just showed him kind of his part about it. And he, uh, when he saw it all, he could say was, wow, I look old. Like, <laughs> about himself, you know. Yeah. Not, but uh, um, my mom, she's excited about it. Okay. She doesn't know. Like, I've told her, you know, there are some scenes that she probably shouldn't watch. And so right. she knows, but. Uh, well, it's a little scene with her, with the sh you're showing her the. Yeah, the she was a little embarrassed. <laughs> she was a little embarrassed by it, but she, she was, um pretty open-minded she knows that I've been working really hard and, yes. and she knows this is something serious and uh, so she, she she's happy for me that oh it's good yeah it's good um, and it's doing well overall I, I think, think so yeah um, <laughs> so give me another roll then another. And my parents are, are open-minded oh, oh that's that's good that's, yes. yeah <laughs> um, that's it. two a two okay oh this is actually sort of well it's not quite anything but it goes I, I have random questions so do you think Disney should stop doing princesses uh, in the fact that it's, you know, not good for the girls to have the idea that to be a princess because you have to be born into it, you know, not with the skills or hard work and stuff, so, because um, you have two young girls. Yeah, right? yeah, you know, and they really weren't into the Disney princesses. I never really showed them the Disney princesses, um, but they were always into Jasmine for some reason, even though they never really watched Aladdin, so I don't know if that they saw Jasmine and saw me, kind of, so that could be. I think it's that the might picture. be. I could see that, um, yes. And so they got into kind of Elsa and Anna because everyone was really into that um, for a while. And I liked that story in a sense because it showed, you know, true love was the sisters and, and so that was very different they showed a different uh, And then they make fun of the, what do you mean I'm going to marry you? I just, we just, we just met. Right, exactly. Like, 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 and so I really liked the newer Disney princesses. I liked those stories more than the older stories. Okay. And um, I do think they need to, they, I think they're going the right direction, changing it up. Um, so I, I think, you know, with Moana and all them, they, I think they, they're going the right way. Oh, okay. They're kind of letting go of the old stories. Well, yeah, because yeah. it's sort of one of those ones, like, when you're really younger, yeah. a few decades ago, it was cute. You know? Yeah. But now it's like, uh, I, Yeah, and I try not to, like, uh, you know, I try not to push the princesses on them. I kind of let them do their own thing. And, you know, with Jace uh, really into Star Wars and whatnot, he kind of pushes that on them. And he tries to be like, you know, Princess Leia is a Disney princess. And, you know, True. She, so... He tries to, you know, we, we kind of let them do their own thing, but we're trying to give them good examples. Exactly. And the funny part, though, is now that Disney owns Fox, mm -hmm. the alien property is part of Fox. Right. So the 
queen mom there is technically an alien princess now. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> so, don't look at it that way. It's like, well, not really a role model, but right. well, protecting your mom, <laughs> you know, your kids. Uh, give me another roll. Eleven. Eleven. Ah. So going on to your web series, which mm -hmm. is now on YouTube and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Um, have you? I don't know if you've tried some Kickstarter or Patreon or other sources for um, getting some money to help you offset the costs and that. No, not yet. We haven't done that. Um, everything was out of pocket for myself and, and my co-creator, uh, Billy Lee David, and he. Um, Who's also stars in the. Right. He he also stars in. So what um, um, was I came up with the idea. I sent it to him, and then he started developing. The, the story with me and we started going through the characters and stuff and um, so we we put our we invested our own money because we're like you know if how are we going to get other people to invest in us if we don't invest in us so we do that first and um, I'm hoping that for a second season that we would get some funding so we haven't really decided how we're going to do that yet um, hopefully get some producers on board or something maybe a bigger like a network or something we'll see and kind of developing the show uh, a bit more because we did everything um, like very, very indie production. Yes. Well, yeah, I'm yeah. still very proud of what we oh, no, put out yes. completely and, you know, and it was out of pocket. Um, but what should have been in like an $80,000, $90,000 show was $5,000. Exactly. But again, you're putting so. it out of your own pocket. Right. And I mean, you guys did great for an indie show. There's a couple scenes and stuff like that where you're like, okay, you can tell that it's indie as opposed to higher, you know, right. real production. I'm going to just, because, I'm, because that question came up, I'm going to jump to another one okay. then that because it ties in really well if you get money yes will you go with union workers and stuff like that or not uh so it's very different so the way the union works because we are already non-union i'm a non-union mm -hmm. uh, actor um you can't mix the union, oh, really? union. yeah oh. so the only way i can get a union actor is if my act my current actors who will be on the second season become union uh we work it out that way because they've already been on you know and they've signed a contract so mm -hmm. they're you know, but I can't get new union actors on board. And then she switched everyone over to. And, and uh, I don't. So that's where it becomes a little, you know, foggy as well. Like, can I? I don't know if I can make it a union production and make all of us union. I don't think it works like that. So. Okay. Well, that's just what I was yeah. thinking. It's like because it's in, independent ones are great. Yeah. But when you start getting money, you're like, well, do we want to get, you know? I'm very, very happy with my actors. Um, I'm Thank very, you, you know, it, I, I don't. I feel like that's a myth that you know only union actors are great because I know um, I've seen a lot of union actors that are not as skilled as some of my the non-union actors I've worked with. So I think it's uh, that's just a bit of a myth. Um, and uh, so I, I think very I'm very proud of like the, the work that my actors got had gone through. I and, have. Uh, so, yeah, everyone I, is very trained, and very skilled. Yeah, there, there's a lot of good scenes in it's there. It's very hard to get into the union actually. Yes. So oh, really? okay. mm -hmm. it's not every. Yeah, it's not very easy to, to just kind of, you can't be like, oh, it's it's a union. Work, no, yeah. yeah, you have to, you know, um, audition. You have to be part of a union production, and they won't look at non union actors. So, <laughs> so it goes back to that. Do you have experience? Well, no. Exactly. Well, you need experience. Well, how do you get experience? experience. Yeah. So it's kind of like that. So uh, a little. Oh, give me another right. roll then. Sorry. That, no, that's okay. <laughs> Did you 13 already? No. Nope. Okay. Because it's you're the main writer with Blake as well. Right. It's your it's your production. Right. Do you guys have a end point to the series? Like, do you're fine. Okay, we're going to do if you can. Yeah. You know, if you have a budget and people, yeah. are we going to do three seasons, four, five, or are you oh, just sort of? We didn't really talk about it. We just kind of you know let's see what we can do. You know, the first season mm -hmm. and see if we can get a second season and see if we can go with the third season and, and go from there. Um, so we haven't really thought that far ahead. Like, I'm happy we even got a first season done. Yes. So. Okay. So, I mean, there's so much we can do with the characters and so much, you know, well, we yes, can go and there's a lot of things that we can explore and that we'd like to touch on. So maybe, like, at least four seasons, five seasons, I would hope. Okay. And your character's little... She's got some issues. <laughs> I feel like we've all got issues. She's, she's, that's, true. that's true. Um, Everyone's a little broken. I don't want to give any spoilers for those who haven't seen it, but there's a few teasers in there where, you know... You're you're real, you're in your third you know your character's in her thirties. Yeah. She's realized she makes mistakes, but then she makes a couple at the very end of the season. Uh, it's like there's a oh, what are you doing? Well, I think you know, and, and I think this is where I feel maybe guys don't understand what she went through. Is that you know a lot of the the writing is um, based on experience, yeah. based on a lot of things that I've gone through. Um, you know, some of my actors have gone through. We, we, we write based on on what we know and. Um, 
you know, especially for women, sometimes it's so hard to wear your heart out on your sleeve, and so you, like, pull back, and, and so she does make mistakes for sure, but oh, she's trying to protect herself. No, that's, right? that's what so, I'm saying. Yeah. Um, I'm going to skip again because okay. that, that ties in well okay. with the, because I, I did watch them all, so all right. I enjoyed them. <laughs> so in the second episode, yeah. the Me Too one, yeah. like, you had people looking directly at the camera yes. instead of, you know, doing their normal parts, you right. had them directly in the right. camera talking about the events. Yes. Now, I thought that was extremely effective. Yeah. Now, two questions on this okay. one. Whose idea was it to do it that way? And was it hard for everyone to actually, you know, partake in that? Yeah, so that was my, from the, the moment I wrote it, I knew that's what I wanted. I filmed it both ways because everyone has hesitant. Mm -hmm. um, they thought it'd be weird to break the fourth wall, but I had seen it on a different show. It's very, um, in a similar context. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I found that very powerful and it stuck with me and I said, we're going to do it this way. And so uh, I stuck to my guns, even though a lot of people were against it. Well, it is hard because then you're like, like you're not just yeah. breaking the fourth wall, but it's, you're obviously talking directly to the yeah, camera absolutely. about something that happened. And something that happened. And so everyone starts to question, well, did this happen to the actor? And yeah, it happened. So three of my stories, three out of the five are real. Wow, that's so three out of four. That is four pretty, sorry, three out of the four are real. That sorry. is actually pretty so, scary when you think about it. Absolutely, and you know the story that I went with wasn't my original story that I was going to go with, which makes me sad because I, you know, I can pick from all the experience I went oh, through, that's, right? That's, so it's very sad. Um, so the original one I had it was a bit longer, and then I was like, you know, it was just getting too hard to go through it. So I was like, you know what? This happened to me as well. It's a bit quicker. It's a bit shorter. I can kind of get to the point and just say it. So um, we did that. I did. I wanted to break the fourth wall because I wanted, you know, the actors to look at the audience and say, "This happened to me, mm -hmm. right?" And you are not alone because I'm sure it happened to you because it's happened to almost every woman I know and some of the men, like as you can see in the in the show. Yeah. So it's um, I, I wanted it to be that powerful. And some people still don't like my choices of breaking the fourth wall. I'm still proud of what I did. I, I thought it was extremely effective. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, like you said, it it did break the fourth wall, but. In a very positive way, because you're sort of saying, "Well, well not you know what I mean." No, I. <laughs> hey, look, this yes, happened to me. Yeah. Hey, it's like, uh, I really wanted it to affect people yeah. and make them uncomfortable. I mean, like, wow, they're looking at me. I wanted that. And uh, I felt sorry. I can't remember the um, his, the, the actor's name, mm -hmm. but the male your your, your love interest. Okay. Uh, he, uh, I must have felt bad for him to be sitting there going, "Okay, I'm being told real stories," and it must like I can imagine as a guy having to sit there and go, like, I feel horrible, but yeah. you know, there's nothing you can really do to... There's, yeah, and I mean, when we had to discuss it, you know, he had said he, he could relate in a sense where he knew a lot of women who had gone through that, and like, you know, and, and as not a lot of males go through, some do, for sure, oh, yes. but not a lot of them, and, you know, he was not one of them that had gone through it, so it was yeah. just very, like, how do you deal with that? Kind of that is. Well, like I said, that's why I like your show, because it does deal with very current and also hard-hitting bits. Yeah. Uh, give me another dive roll then. Okay. I mean, you're trying to keep me. You know, when I started writing it, it was supposed to be a comedy. Oh, really? That changed for me. Well, yeah, there's it's a, a dramedy. It's a dramedy. dramedy yes. Or a dark comedy? I don't yeah. know. 14? Have you seen Captain Marvel and Wonder Woman? Yes. Which one do you prefer and why? Wonder Woman. Um, well, Wonder Woman, I love Wonder Woman. I've always yes. been a fan of Wonder Woman, so I liked it. But I was really proud of the way they put it out there. Mm -hmm. Captain Marvel was okay. I just didn't find... I mean, the what I found fun about Captain Marvel was that it was the 90s, and you got to see Blockbuster yes. and things like and that. And I thought, but, the, you know, the, the, but, the buddy cop show with Nick yeah. Fury was cool, but yeah. yeah, the rest of it I found... Um, really I just... Um, you know, like a friend of mine who reviews films, uh, Keith, he had mentioned it was just kind of like an alley to the, you know, the rest of the, the series. Yes. Um, so I didn't... It was okay. I didn't absolutely love it. But there's Wonder Woman. I really love the way they did it. I loved it. For Wonder Woman, I loved except the very, very end when they actually brought in Ares, that is God, to right. fight. Yeah. I thought it would have been more effective if they had ended. You know, Steve still sacrificed himself right. because of the plane with the gas, yeah. and she kills the guy, but realized there's still war. Yeah. Like I thought that would have been more effective to, as a story as opposed to yeah, in the end there is a God. There's a well, yeah. Well, I mean, there is a because I mean, she comes from. Yeah, right. but I, I still prefer uh, yeah. definitely Wonder Woman over Captain Marvel. Yeah. To me, it was like just a bland. Yeah, movie. It, it was. Yeah, it was. It was. It was okay. Like there was nothing like exciting about it. I found yeah. like there was nothing you know. Whereas Wonder Woman, like I got very emotional during Wonder Woman because I was yes. like, wow, like I am excited that it's just finally happening and it was good. Yes. Oh no. Yeah. You know. It helps that it was a female director probably yes. as well. Yes. Um, well, that's actually why I'll just skip on that one. Yeah. 
So I I like to use the term actor for male or female because yeah. it's actor or director. Do you have a preference? Do you, like do you say you're an actor or do you say you're an actress or does it? I, it does. I, I do both. Okay. Yeah. So now it's actor is pretty generic for everybody and stuff. But yeah. yeah. So do you think they should take it away with the best female or best actress and best actor in Hollywood and just call? No, because it's never going to be equal. equal. They'll they'll say it's equal. It's not equal. It'll no. never be equal. So. All right, one, one couple more there. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, 15. All right. So you work full time. I do. You wrote, starred, and helped direct yes. this. Plus, there's also your, your production company. You're married and mother of two kids. Yes. How do you do it? Do you have any <laughs> words of advice to anyone who say, I don't have the time to do know. anything? I know. I, I, <laughs> um, you have to find the time. And, like, you know, my husband's such a great partner, so he was, he really um, helps when I need the, the time mm -hmm. to go and do these. Um, I, and he's the most encouraging, so I, you know, I had this idea in my mind for a couple of years, and he kept saying, when are you going to write it? When are you going to write it? When are you going to write it? And I'm like, yeah, 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 I'm going to write it, I'm going to write it. And then finally, I did it, and then, like, we powered through it. And so, um, you know, we, he helped me make sure I had the time to do it. You know, I was like, hey, well, this is your time, go do it, you know. Yeah. And, um, you know, he, I would spend full days on set. And um, it's, it's been really hard in a sense where um, we were pow trying to power through it, you know, with the editing and the music and, uh, you know, everything. It's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm obviously not alone in this. So, but I'm like the, I'm like the little, little Well, you're the linchpin. You're like the, I'm the, a showrunner, so I pull everything together and it kind of goes out and, you know, and so... He's been very patient with me going through emails and texts at night all the time yeah. and always on my phone and so um, he's been very, very patient so that's how I had it. But because I'm so passionate about it, it's kind of been what's been energizing me to go. You know, so I am kind of tired, uh, you know, I do work like 8 to 4 and then I come home, I take care of the kids and then, then I write and then I work and then, you know, and so I do go to bed late and so it's just really the passion that kind of gets me through it and knowing that I want more out of my life than just a 9 to 5. Like that, no, no, my, that was never my that my my intention was never to work a nine to five, and you know I blame ten years later I'm still there. So <laughs> now you're actually going through. Now yes. you, you won uh, a couple awards for Nara. That was a short film. Yeah. This is a full web series. Mm -hmm. That must have been a huge change of pace and everything it for is. you to sort of realize. Like it was. It was such a bigger production, and um, you. It's hard, especially because everyone's voluntary on these productions, and. You know, you gotta make sure you feed them well, and you take care of them, and you make sure they're, you know, they feel at ease and safe with you. And, um, well, especially for some of the stuff that. You know, yeah, absolutely. This and I and had uh, I had hired uh, Miss Jamie Jones, who is a sexual wellness coach, to be my set ethics and intimacy coach, so that she was on there on set to make sure that nobody crossed the line, people felt comfortable in the um, these intimate scenes, because you know, not only for myself, but like Blake's in a compromising position, other mm -hmm. actors too, and so to make sure that. Um, she was there to talk, you know, talk through it with them, um, what, you know, is normal, what not, what's not normal, like to feel, um, should something arise, and if anybody was uh, disrespectful or anything, they would be kicked off such she'd take care of that, so, okay. um, we had the her for that, so, um, so, it's, it's, um, I mean, I basically made a feature film, yes. which is what it is in the end. Um, and there was a lot of long days, you know, weekends, some evenings of filming. Uh, we did 12 days of filming, and then a lot of it's post-production and production, and it's a lot of work. Um, but you just have to hope people are as passionate as you are kind of going through it and doing this with you and, and to get something out of it again. Now, will you think about doing another film, or are you going to be focusing mostly on the web series for a while? Because, um, like I said, you did win an award for, you know, a short film for Nara. Yeah, um, I think I, I have a couple of short films lined up that I'd like, like to do, and uh, to kind of to keep me learning, keep me going, like, learning new skills and new things, and um, learning different parts of filmmaking. Um, so the short films are really good for that. Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, I do want to focus on a season two, but I, I still, I'm, I'm going to be focusing on uh, promoting the series and trying to meet mm -hmm. people, and, you know, I'm going to tip this year to hopefully network and meet people good. who maybe want to back it up. Well, that'd be awesome. You know? I have to ask a question about yeah, this okay. one's like, okay. in episode four, okay. was there a butt double? There was no butt double. <laughs> there was no butt double. Uh, you know, and this is a conversation you have to have with actors. And I, you well, know, yeah, that's it, uh, and you auditioned for that part, you yeah. know. Um, so it's, you know, it was hard to find um, someone willing, you know, who's like a skilled actor who is willing to, to do this. It's mm -hmm. not even just 
being, you know, exposed in that way, but also um, maybe kissing another man who they've never done yeah, before. Yeah. And so, you know, there are some actors who said, you know, uh, I don't really want to kiss another man. But, yeah. And it's, you know, yeah. it's totally you know, they're, they're right. That yes. They don't want to, you know, it's everyone has their boundaries, their comfort zones. Well, that's what I was wondering, because, like, it's a spanking scene. Yeah. And so that, I guess, you know, that's what I was wondering, is, like, I could see some people being... Absolutely. You know, I don't... Right, 100%. And I, you know, and so, you know, writing this, I knew it wouldn't be easy to find someone who, you know, but Peter, who was Indian as well, yeah. um, was fantastic, and he was up for it, and, and he understood, like, that we were, in, we were very professional, and he worked with us before, and mm. he, he knew that this wasn't just, like, another, like, oh, another short film or whatever. He mm. knew that we were very serious about it. We took our job seriously, and, you know, in the room, we were only, um, I'd say, four extra people. Um, well, that helps the whole. Just to yeah. keep it, it's made to be safe, keep it comfortable, and they are in bathrobes as soon as they were done. You know, um, we gave them the breaks that they needed. Um, so it's a, you know we tried to make it as professional and as comfortable as possible, and um, I think Ian Peter knew that coming yeah. into it. So um, you were talking earlier about the LGBTQ. Yeah. Now you mostly don't have the T in there yet. There's no, um, no, you're there's, thinking, like, or for season two, are you thinking of expanding I mean, or? Yeah, absolutely. Like, I mean, we were testing the waters a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. I was writing from my experiences and, you know, my group of friends, you know, so I wrote, you know, I started a character about me and then I moved on to Blake and then we expanded to my friend Julie and then we expanded to like another character, which we got Jesse and then, you know, Ollie, Ollie was, you oh, know, based funny. on Jake, my husband. So like, it's, it's based on people I know, you know, and they're all loosely based on the, the actors, the, yeah, um, done, so. so that's you know, and I, you know, I didn't have a trans um, person in my life at the time, so. Um, but I'm learning so much, especially you know, writing the show and people knowing that what we're right, we're very open-minded, and we're, we want to uh, normalize a lot of things and and um, keep everything in the positive light. People re reach out and have been reaching out about in terms of the kink, in terms of um, you know, being tra the trans, and yeah, I'd like to add um, more in my second season if I had one, you know, we would definitely uh, touch on um, trans, we definitely touch on more kink and more in-depth, uh, you know, polyamorous relationships and stuff that um, that are really coming to light now and kind of showing the other sides of it and uh, more of the positive, I guess. Yes. So people like, I feel people fear what they don't understand and if we educate, maybe they'll have an open mind. That's it. Oh, that, like I said, that's, that's an interesting one, because I know you're, like a lot of the questions you put in there, like why do people treat people like this, and a lot of it is fear, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. Fear of the unknown, or fear of whatever stuff, um, so. It, it's, it, and I have, like, I know people who haven't been able to watch it, they just, it was too much for them, yes. you know, and I feel like we haven't pushed enough boundaries, and I thought we kept it fairly safe, um, I would like to push more boundaries. So we'll see. Because this this story this series has very mature themes. Right. I'm sure in ours in that they saw your short. This one I'm sure you haven't shown them anything. Oh, absolutely not. Yeah. How will you at some point and how will you broach a subject with them or are you gonna wait for them to sort of ask? Um, I think like, you know, as they get older, you know, we already talk about, you know, certain things like, you know, your body parts are your body parts and no one touches them and you know, they try to joke with me and be like, Oh mommy, your your bum or your boobies and I'm like, No, those are mine, you don't touch them. Like, you no know, one touches yours and no one yeah. can give you a bath except for you know, we try to teach them in that way and um, so as they get older we will be broaching the subject slowly and kind of um, in, in, I guess, a different context. Like, you know, with my mother, uh, when I was 17, I was like, are you ever going to talk to me about sex? And she's like, no, nope, nope. <laughs> you just don't do it. Yeah, that's, that's it. pretty much it. So, was... you know, and I definitely want my kids to be very educated and understand their choices and understand consent and be very aware of it, and, um, that they have choices and um, that they feel confident in their choices that they make. And that, you know, if they do want to have sex, if, you know, in high school or whatever, that, you know, they're well They'll be have really good, good dis exactly. decision as opposed to... And that they can come talk to us about it. Yeah. And that they don't feel uncomfortable. And that, you know, it's a very open conversation. So I'm hoping that that's where we're going with that. <laughs> Thanks, Richard. Hopefully that's where no, we're going. No, that's, that's, that's true. Because it's only, like I said, yeah. I have a whole bunch of questions yeah. for you for this. The other one is, another switching, I'll just have to okay. stop on the dice. We're getting down to the last okay. okay. now. Um, so are you thinking maybe trying to sell this to Netflix, Crave, or Prime or something? Yeah, to... absolutely. If we can get, um, you know, one of these uh, networks behind us, I think we can do some real, some good. And I think it's definitely um, a show that people need to see and, and um, because um, we're very diverse, you know, and especially as a Muslim Arab, um, either, you know, there's, there's 
limited. To very usually. limited, and like I mean, very stereotyped. And you know, I grew up. You know, I was born in Canada. Uh, we grew up with like immigrant parents, and I feel like you don't see that enough on TV. That like we're kind of stuck between two cultures. You know, it's stuck with the culture from your parents' house, and you're stuck. You know, the culture where like you go to school with all these people. So, um, you know, I feel like I'm. I'm um, I feel like I. I have some spice to me, I guess, you know, um, and we don't, you know, when you see Muslims on TV, it's either they're very Arab or very whatever, you yes. know, covered in this and that, and, like, that's not the reality. Even, like, Arab Muslims in, in Lebanon, like, my cousins are half-half. Some of them are covered, some of them are not, and yeah. it's their choices. Yes. You know, it's not imposed on them because, you know, they're not in a very conservative country, um, and, and I feel like they... When you show Muslims and Arabs in a negative light, this is what prompts Islamophobia. This well, is what prompts the hate. This is what and it's fear. also for a lot of Hollywood that, that tends to be stereotyped, well, yeah, you know, generalized. We, this is what we're looking for. Yeah. But I do more. No, no, but we want you as this. Yeah, so, you know, you're the refugee, you're a terrorist, or you're like related to one, or this, you know, you're covered, or you're oppressed, or whatever. And you're like, mm, no, that's not. I'm right. a normal that's person not, who exactly. has normal lives. Like, yeah. And you know, my mother grew up in Lebanon. She never covered once. Her sister did because her sister likes being, you know, a hijabi woman. Yeah. My mom never liked it, and her parents never pushed her on it. You know, my mom wore short skirts and tank tops and whatever. And you know, um, we're very much of the mind of you know, be who you want to be, and you know, um, be comfortable with yourself, yeah, and, and respect yourself, and and know who you are, be confident in who you are, and stuff. So it's, um, I've never covered unless we went to pray at the mosque, or you know, and I used to do, I used to do the Ramadan way back when, and I haven't anymore, and I feel like a lot of you know, first generation, second generation Arab Muslims are like that too, so. Are you gonna bring into like, this is a heavy topic, yeah. religion into your shoe? Absolutely, I think because like I didn't touch enough about it um, in this season other than with my parents, like, we definitely will be touching on more about it on the second season, and we'll probably bring in a bit more of the conservative and more on the open. Well, because and the Christian side as well has its whole issues with the gays and the lesbians oh, yeah. as well. So that's why I said it's not just a Muslim yeah. thing, it's. Well, in terms of like, we will be bringing in more Muslims, because I feel like we didn't touch enough about it, because like, yeah, we touched on myself, my family, but I feel like we can expand a little bit more. And yeah, we could bring it on the other side because you know when Blake and I, uh, Blake and I had talked about his backstory for his character, we talked about religious parents. So we might look into that way as well. Uh, you know, for in my mind, like uh, I just <coughs> I can't. For me, I can't believe people will choose religion over their children. You know. It, it's brainwashing. It, basically. It, it's from an early age, it, and then you're just like, but your your kids are your kids, and and no matter what, and religion, like if if like to me, I feel like they they've altered obviously religion, like because for me Jesus would have oh, or whatever, you would, know, Jesus and Muhammad would be coming around just slapping him left right and well, center, going, what are you like, doing? Well, like Jesus I never said. What'd you do, Mom? Jesus preached about love and acceptance about everybody, and he did. So I feel like, you know, like I've seen a post recently, like, stop whitewashing Jesus. Like, he wasn't, you know, he's not born in America. He's, you know, he's a brown Arab, you know. Yeah. And, and he accepted prostitutes and gays and everybody, and he loved everybody. And I feel like people um, have strayed from that. Yeah, and, and so I find that it's, it's heartbreaking when you will choose religion over your children. Okay. On another heavy note. Right. With the Me Too movement and other things going on, mm -hmm. so you hear like Kevin Spacey's done stuff, right. Ratner and all these ones have done yeah. stuff, and Bill Cosby with his history. Yeah. Uh, so they removed you know the, the Cosby Show and stuff right. like that. But uh, this is where I'm going to be devil's advocate here. Yeah. So Gandhi and Mother Teresa did some bad things as well. Okay. Right. But you're going to stop paying attention to what they have to say. So for some people. Mm -hmm. Uh, like, will you watch Roseanne, or will you watch The House of Cards with Kevin Spacey? Like, will you, you yourself watch stuff where you know this person's bad, but overall yeah. the show is good? Well, I feel like that you're punishing the rest of the cast and crew who worked really, really hard when you, you stop watching, you know. It sucks because he's they're making royalties and money off of the shows, and they, do they deserve it? No, for all like, them being no. really shitty. But, all the, but all the other people on the show they, do. Yeah, and uh, you know, it's not just the cast, it's the crew, it's the, you know, and... Um, it's very unfortunate that there's that uh, imbalance there. Yeah, because I guess if people go, well, I'm never going to watch this show yeah. again, or this, like, I understand yeah. where they're coming from, but it's like, well, there's other people involved. Right? Yeah. It's not just... But then you have, but they're the show, right? Like, you know, so you have, he's the lead, and Roseanne's yes. the lead, and like, they're the lead, and you're like, well, I'm, I'm probably not going to watch your face anymore, because you're, you know, mm -hmm. well, I mean, Roseanne, that's other reasons I've never well, really yeah, cared for Roseanne, but uh, her attitude, it's, yeah. yeah. But that's where I was like, you know, I can understand 
on an emotional level, you're like, yeah. oh, I'm never going to watch this again. But, but if did you enjoy it beforehand? Mm. You may, it's like for me, like there's a uh, Clint Eastwood. Mm. He's done some bad things, but I like some of the stuff. So it's like, ah, oh, it's hard it's to. It's hard to absolutely. But I mean, so it's like, will you be friends with this person you know who sexually assaulted somebody? Yeah, but because you think he's a good guy, is he really a good, good guy? guy? But that's yeah. uh, like it'd be different. Like, so, it's weird. It's weird. It's like, well, on a friend level, I wouldn't want to talk right. to him. I was like, well, if it's, you wouldn't want to talk to him as a person, why are you going to watch them? It's like, well. I know, yeah, it's, it's just a really hard, um, yeah, that's really hard to, to kind of balance that. Yeah. Uh, so now, I understand in the show, the, the, the intro was always how everyone's wearing masks yeah. to start with, because that shows the mask that everyone always has. You came up with this idea, I guess, right? No, always... actually, I did not come up with this idea. Oh, okay. So, no, the intro is, um, so the guy who plays Ollie, him and, and uh, my friend Rami, who does all our photos, um, who filmed the intro, they came yeah. up with it together. So, I mean, how do you... You want. We wanted a sexy intro. We wanted something, you know, cool. You know, my friend Julie was like, "Oh, you know, um, I really like this intro from this show. It's very sexy. It's very dark." And I'm like, "Okay, cool. So we're gonna work with that." Um, and so they came up with the idea of like, um, first it was just going to be the kink toys. Mm -hmm. um, and although like we don't have that many kink toys in the show, we have a couple and, and whatnot. And um, but I was like, "Well, I can't have dildos and vibrators everywhere. It's kind of <laughs> so the kink toys. We'll go with that." And then when they were shopping for everything, they found the masks, and they're like, "Oh, this would be really interesting." So we went with that. Because yeah, like I said, it's part of the theme of like you were saying earlier, like everyone wears masks. Everyone, but... yeah, and also uh, there's a whole fetish thing behind it too. So yes. it's a little bit of a both uh, situation. So. So, to give people an idea, how long would it you say it takes you now, on average, to go from, you know, you've written it, yeah. to acting in it, directing yeah. it, producing it, yeah. post production, and putting it out? It took us a, a year and a half. For each shows? No, no, for the whole thing. For the whole thing? Yeah, so, uh, well, like, I pushed it. Like, yes. because but it I mean, there's only eight shows. Sorry? There's, there's eight episodes. Eight episodes. It's eight episodes. It's about, oh my god, 80 so, minutes. Yeah, some are like 15, some, some are 20s. Yeah, some are 20s, some are like 9, 20, yeah. so it really varied. Um, but a year and a half overall. Like that's but, and that's pushing it because um, I feel like we could have taken a lot more time with our pre-production. And yeah. uh, like I said, being an independent production, you can't push people to work on things when they're busy doing other things because, you know, with their jobs that they're getting paid for. So they're yeah. doing this on their time. Um, and because they're passionate about it. So I can't be like, well, I need this now because, you know, I'm almost done. And it's like, well, they still have their nine to five to figure out and other projects and stuff. So. Well, again, you're, yeah, these are volunteers. So. Right. So. And uh, the Pub 101 and other places yeah. like uh, Venus Envy. Sponsors, yeah. Sponsors. We were very, very lucky to have the sponsors that we did. Now, some of the scenes in the Venus Envy, were those extra, like you said, people as extras or were they actually people in the store? So we had one person from the store who's in the background. Um, and. Uh, who's great as well so uh, but the rest are my, my agent oh. and Lisa um, and uh, our accountant for the agency uh, Nicole so they were in both extra like as extras um, yeah. and then we had Jenna who was uh, Jesse's radio partner on Jump 1069 but then oh. they have their own okay. podcast as well so they're uh, so she came and made a cameo and nice. she has a very distinct voice yeah. I think a lot of people would recognize um, so she was fun to have on so, do you have any hints for you know the out of the basement people for next season? What you have planned? Oh my gosh! Tiny hints. Uh, tiny or? hints. Um, darker, sexier for sure. Um, bathroom breaks. Oh, I'm not gonna talk about that. Oh so, come on! Uh, no, no, you know, no. You know, that's a cliffhanger. You no, I know exactly. They're cliffhangers. I can't tell you what happens next, oh. but definitely darker and sexier. And I think a lot of. Um, the way we ended with things, you know, um, we'll have, you know, the way we have um, Marcus, you know, Jesse's character, Marcus, he's yeah. very uh, bitchy on the outside, very, you know, I guess more on the stereotype gay, but, you know, he's a lot, you know, he's crumbling on the inside, you don't see that. Well, you, you did that, like, that one scene near the end where he was, the police called him, yeah. and it wasn't, that, that and was... so that's very much a setup for a second season, so okay. it's, it's to, to show his more emotional side, which we didn't get to see this time around. Um, so we're setting that up, and you know, um, so pay attention. There's a lot of setups for the second season um, in terms of Julie, in terms okay. of you know, well, we don't know what's going to happen with you know, Blake, uh, Blake and Lisa and whatnot. Like so um, you gotta you know pay attention to the little details, and, and those are the setups for the second season. And obviously expanding and whatnot, but dark, darker, it's sexier. You know, play a little bit more comedy. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> well, this hurts. I like throw write comedy in something this dark. It, I you know. have to like sort of try like okay. Um, I thought that, we had a good balance, I guess. Was but there was there any real time like when you're doing it, did that people ad lip like 
do. Oh yeah, we this. have some ad libbing for sure. Um, you know, some of the actors be like, "Can I say this?" So yeah, for sure. You know, um, they add little lines here and there. Like Julia had ad lib lines, Mark uh, had ad lib lines. Um, we definitely we joked around. And, you know, things come out of that. So. That helps a lot when you have a good team like that too. I, yes, and everyone. Really Especially great. with the, again, the subject matter is one of those ones where it's like. Yeah, yeah. and you know, it's uh, we have such a great community. Um, especially like Ottawa is, Ottawa. <laughs> I'm saying Ottawa's dirty little secret is very. <laughs> it's not so, not so little. Um, Ottawa is a very sexual city. Yeah. And a lot of people don't know that because it's so hidden under like the government conservative type. Um, look, I guess that we, we try to portray. Again. But yeah, it's but you know there's a lot of uh, there's kink studios and you know there's there's a lot of polyamorous relationships you know like the bar and swingers and things like that. If you've heard those are real. Yeah. So um, we've been learning a lot and uh, and I think that this is something that we, you know should that's it expose. I think people should should know about it. I think people should under. Um, Maybe just try to understand it. Yeah, Ottawa is not as conservative town. No, as it isn't, and, and it's very, and it's, and what I think we're, you know, well, what I know we're trying to portray is that it's not shameful to be no. sexual. It's not, you know, we're trying to make it very sex positive, and you know, it's it, not to feel ashamed because you're in a polyamorous relationship or, um, you know, you're you're into cake or you know fetish and um, or you know you love yourself a lot so that's okay and I think people um, place a lot of shame on that because maybe religion or culture or you know whatnot and uh, especially when it comes to women mm -hmm. you know yes. so we're trying to you know advocate like if a woman wants to be in a sexy clothes she can be in sexy clothes without you know asking for it yes so we're trying to change that's that still narrative. that's still out there too oh, for sure yeah but we're trying to change that narrative you know um, and so that's there's a lot of things that we had said in the show that we try to you know with like you know owner of the sex store, you know, she, she says, if I want to dress sexy for myself, it's not for you. Okay. You know, and as long as you're not breaking the law, like, what does it matter? You and know? also the, the instructor there for the spanking yeah. is the, the, the four C's. Right, and so and she, and Jamie is a, um, a real dominatrix, and, you know, this is her, what she does. We want to make sure that what we were putting in the show was the correct information that we were getting. We weren't getting some fluff, we were getting some real information, real facts, and okay. so. So you were saying yes, uh, sir. The, the four C's. Yes. Was, she was saying how you wanted what she actually... I wanted real information. You know, I, I wasn't writing to write. Like, I wanted to provide real information to people out there who was intrigued or interested in to know, you know, and that would kind of, I think, um, get them started. Yeah. So, you know, when we filmed that scene, we did it twice. And both times, you know, Jamie spoke for about 20 minutes. So I may edit that and put it out there just to, to show what... You know, she showed us uh, a full spanking scene where she did spank me, yeah. and we went through it. And um, well, actually, yeah, I would say you should put stuff up like that, like the making of. Yeah, I think you know. we might, you know, just to keep you know the interest going and whatnot. Yeah. But there was a lot of stuff that uh, we could definitely put on um, there that would educate people. Yeah. And that's what main role. Well, one of the things you're going for yeah. is to show people like, yeah, it's out there. It's yeah. okay. Don't be exactly. ashamed. Exactly, and we're trying to provide real information. We're trying to provide, you know. Um, real experiences, real stuff, and, um, you know, I've had people reach out and be like, hey, like, you shouldn't put your sex toys in one box together, the silicone against silicone, it shouldn't be, I'm like, oh, you know, that's, well, that's information the I, that I, I never would have you know, on my either. own stuff, all right, okay, cool, you know, so, yeah. um, but we have such a great uh, fan base, we do, we have great people who reach out all the time and tell us how uh, much they love the show, and, and I think it's because they're starting to see themselves somewhere where they didn't feel welcome before and now they're starting to see that's, their interest on TV or on something and, and they can say, hey, like that's, that's cool, well, that's the, my uh, stuff. Well, the woman I, I linked to yesterday mm -hmm. for that Karen, she's actually another sex educator as well. Oh, amazing. So she's been doing it for a long time. Yeah. So like, oh, wait a minute. And she probably didn't hear about that because she yeah. doesn't see my links. Okay. So I put it through her and say, hey, check it out because... That's awesome. Like that. And you know, um, we were lucky that we had, you know, Venus Envy behind us. Mm -hmm. um, and they're very, uh, they educate a lot on, on different things at their store. So, um, you know, I think it was a good pairing in that sense. Or, um, so, like, we, we share a lot of their stuff on our Twitter and what their, their courses. And, you know, they're very supportive and they're very, um, they, they understood what we were trying to go with in terms of, you know, we're here to uh, make everything sex positive and educate and, and not shame yeah. people. And you're trying to make it very woman positive and women, you know. Mm -hmm. What well, works? Uh, just one last one there. Yeah. Because do you have an idea when you'd like to bring out the next season? Because well, I know like there's a lot of work involved. It is a lot of work. I mean, if we got funding, it would be a lot sooner for sure. Um, I mean, it'd probably be like another year or 
so it takes oh. a long time. It takes a long time to create these things, and yes. you know, um, and it's not even the writing; it's the pre-production. You want to make sure that it's you know, you're you're very well organized. Like the you know, being an independent filmmaker, you know, you're um, being organized is such it's so key. You know, yeah. and make sure that you're taking care of your your actors and your crew members. Well, it must well be hard to coordinate all like the times and everything as well too. It is very hard. Everyone, yeah, you're saying everyone's working, everyone's working. You're trying to find a location. Right. And so when so you're when you have funding, you can pay for their time, so yes. they can get their time off, and you're they're still getting paid. And, and, and also can, have a permanent location for sh for some yeah, shots. Absolutely. Shoots. Uh, you know, I was very lucky. My sister in law let us use her apartment, um, and you know, the sponsored locations that we got, we were very lucky. And, and so, um, but again, you have to work around everyone's some of their schedules. Times. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because like Pub One One, I'm sure. Hey, let's go on a Saturday after. You know, we, you know, we 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 filmed on a Saturday morning, yeah. and you know, so people started coming in at eleven, and, and workers were coming in. They were like, oh no, like the sound is coming through, and yeah. it's hard. And so it was. Uh, I mean, there was it was a huge learning experience for everybody on set. Um, you know, myself for sure, you know, because I was acting, I was rowing, I directed, I did, you know, all of the things, and I had other directors come in, but they were still pushing out my vision, you yes. know, so it was still, it was still my work that, you know, I said, this is what I want, this is what I want, to, you know, so make sure that, like, this is being portrayed when you're directing, so, um, now, were you involved? Or like, were you there all even when the scenes you weren't there? Oh, were absolutely. You... I'm the one directing the scenes that I'm not in. I'm, oh, okay. you know, I'm I'm the showrunner, so I'm the one that like I lead everything. So I'm the the hub, you know. So I'm like, it starts from me and it goes out. So and no you know, nervous breakdown. Almost. Well, I, there's a lot of tears. Yes, I've had nervous breakdowns, and and because you know it's such a collaborative effort, people feel like they have. Like, well, you should do this, and you should do this, and you should do this, and I will listen, but there's some points, I'm like, you know, this is still my, my show, vision. you know, and it's like, it's it's not up to you to decide, and, you know, you may not like this, but that's not my problem. But it's good that you have a good crew, or, you know, good people that will accept that, because some people are like, yeah. oh, no, if you're not going to, you know, I'm not going to... And, you know, within the film industry, there's a lot of egos. Even in the independent community, there's yeah. a lot of egos, and, and sometimes you just have to learn how to, like, manage them and deal with it, and it's hard, because, and if they don't like it, they can step off, but I think, like, we had a really good production, and, you know, I mean, people well, get again, gossipy and whatever, are sort but, of the, yeah. yeah, I don't like this. Yeah. Well, you're volunteer, it's hard for me to say. Yeah, well, that's it, and, like, this is what we're gonna, we're, we're trying to achieve. You want, you're on board, or you're not on board. Yeah kind of thing and I tried my very best to uh, make sure everyone felt great, everyone felt safe, you know, there's a couple of moments where, um, you know, we we had some friction with some people and um, that happens. it happens, absolutely. So, you know, I thought I thought we did really well overall and everyone still got along really well and, you know, there was no hard feelings with anybody and um, we, we had a great time and like we really absolutely loved the show and a lot of the cast and crew really, really loved being part of it and they like being part of something that's so much bigger than they thought it would be. Yeah. Well, here's to the first season. Thank you. And to many more. Cheers. So thank you very much uh, for another Patio Time with Patrick. And we will hopefully we'll have more people from Dirty Love coming by to talk about their experience. Yeah, that. But there will be a lot more coming up this year. Thank you.